Life Audio. Teach Us to Pray is brought to you by Life Audio and is a part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Do you wake up anxious first thing in the morning? Your mind is racing with thoughts of what you need to get done today and what you failed to do yesterday. If this is a pattern for you, I challenge you to break the morning cycle of worry with prayer. And I'm going to share with you how to do just that in today's episode. Christians should be serious about our faith. But does that mean we need to be serious people all the time, especially in a world of weird, absurd stuff? And even when Christian culture gets crazy? I'm Barnabas Piper of the Happy Ramp Podcast, where we cheerfully rant about pop culture, church culture, work, creativity, life, and just about everything. But we take Jesus seriously. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Welcome back, friend. You are listening to the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we teach believers practical and real life tips on how to grow your faith and relationship with God through the power of prayer. I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast and founder of Beloved Women, where I encourage, equip, and empower women in the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's word. If we wake up in the morning with an anxious heart and mind and do not rid ourselves of that anxiety, it will follow us throughout our entire day. The good thing for us is that we have a cure for worry and anxiety, which Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 tells us is prayer and thanksgiving. This powerful combination can help you stop worry before it tries to take over your day. And in today's episode, I want to teach you how to pray in the morning to free yourself and your day of worry and anxiety. So the first thing that you want to ensure that you're doing in the morning is not filling yourself with information and things that are going to make you worry. It is not a good idea to get on your phone or watch the news first thing in the morning. Those first few minutes of your day have the power to set the course of how your entire day will go. So you want to use that time to your advantage. And by scrolling on social media or looking at all the bad things that happened in the news last night is not a good place to start your day. You want to start in a peaceful place of prayer. And so I like when I wake up in the morning to just lay there for a few minutes. Don't jump up and just immediately rush with the first thought that comes into my head like, oh, I got to get this done. I got to put this on my to-do list. All these things, right? Now, those thoughts will probably come in your head. You will probably be tempted to see what happened on Instagram last night. But I'm challenging you to resist those urges. Allow your mind time to come into the day. Be still. Be silent. If the first thing that you say is, Lord, thank you for waking me up today, that is a great place to start again. It's prayer and thanksgiving that is going to help you rid your day of worry and anxiety first thing in the morning. So acknowledge God first. Acknowledge that he woke you up. Acknowledge that you are here. Acknowledge that you have a bed to wake up in. Acknowledge that God kept you through the night and allowed you to see another day. Then before you do anything else, you want to pray. Now, you may pray in the bed. If that's what you do, you want to be cautious of this because you might fall back asleep. You may get up and go to a special chair in your house and journal your prayer. You may pray while you brush your teeth and get your hair ready in the morning. Whatever works for you, depending on the situation and the season that you are in, just make sure that you're starting with prayer. And here are some prayer points that you can be praying for. Uh, First, you want to be praying for protection for that day. You want to pray over all the steps that you'll be taking wherever God will lead you. 
you know, oftentimes we start our days and we assume we know how our day will go, right? But the Bible tells us that, yes, it's man that plans in his heart, but it's the Lord that establishes our steps. And so we just want to be mindful of that. We want to pray that God will lead us to where he wants us to go, that he will protect us to wherever he is taking us that day that we might not even expect. Have you ever had a day where you were like, wow, I did not see that coming? I know I have, but guess who did see it coming? God. He knows every step that you are going to take. So we want to be praying to him that he would guide those steps, that he would cover us in all of our travel and all of our coming and going for the day when my husband has to go into work. That is my prayer for him, that God would just give him traveling mercies to work and back home like he always has faithfully done. And so even when our day may not go as expected, we can trust that we have prayed over the steps that the Lord has led us to take that day and that he is sovereign and that he is in control. Oftentimes, the worry that we face in the morning looking at the day ahead is because we are not sure of what to expect for that day. And now many times we can kind of have a good general idea of what to expect because we do the same things every day, get breakfast, get the kids off to school, kids go to school, work, come home, eat dinner, go to basketball practice, come back, right? But sometimes we worry if things will go smoothly. Sometimes we worry if we'll make it to a certain place on time or if this person will have their part of the project done. There's so much that is out of our control. But when we pray for the Lord to order our steps, even if something happens that's out of our control, we don't have to worry about it because we can trust through prayer that God is in control. We also want to pray that God would be speaking to us throughout the day, that we would acknowledge him in all the things that we're doing and all the places that we're going. Your morning prayer doesn't have to stop in the morning. It can be just the initiation of your conversation with God that you're going to have throughout the day. Pray that you would have a mind to see God moving in your life that day. Pray that you would have a heart to be sensitive to what he is leading you to do that you can hear from him. I encourage you to check out my episode called How to Pray Without Ceasing that really teaches you how to make prayer just a natural part of your day so that you can take the comfort of prayer in the morning throughout your entire day to experience God's peace every single hour, minute, and second. The next thing that I like to pray for is wisdom and discernment to know what to do. Oftentimes, the beginning of a day means that there are many decisions awaiting us that we will have to make during that day. So I always start my day praying for wisdom and discernment. When it comes to making decisions for the day, you probably already have the facts. You know what it is. You know what you might can possibly expect. But wisdom and discernment is going to give you the power that you need to know how to use those facts to make wise decisions. And it is the decisions that you make that outline the course of your day and eventually your life. So we want to have a mind of wisdom first thing in the morning to be able to make good decisions throughout our day. Once I have the wisdom to know what decisions to make, and I know that God's going to provide that wisdom for me because the Bible tells us that when we ask for wisdom, he's faithful to give it to us. I then want to pray for strength and power to act on that wisdom. King Solomon was known as the wisest man in the world. Unfortunately, he didn't always act on that wisdom when he got distracted from God. So I'm always praying that God would give me the strength and the power to act on the wisdom that he gives me. And I can only get that strength and power from him by being connected with God who gives me the power and the strength to actually do what I need to do that day. And so I just ask for it. I ask, Lord, as I abide in you, as I pray to you, Lord, will you give me the strength and the power to do what it is that you're calling me to do today? And sometimes 
a lot of our anxiety in the morning is caused because we know what we need to do, but we're just not sure if we have the strength to do it. We worry that maybe we don't have the ability to do it. And I just want to encourage you that Philippians 4.13 tells us, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Oftentimes, the strength that you need to do the things that you are called to do is one prayer away. Ask God for the strength because that strength comes from him. And then you don't have to worry about trying to operate in your own strength and your own power, which is way more limitless than God's. You know that God is giving you his power to do all things through him. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like he has been completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear his voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search Hearing Jesus on your favorite podcast app. Next in the morning, I like to pray for peace. And specifically, I pray that God will give me peace for the things that I don't get done that day. So as I receive God's wisdom and knowledge to know what to do, and I receive his power and strength to actually do it, I have to trust that if I don't get something done, I can still have peace knowing that that wasn't in God's will for me to get done that day. How often do we set ourselves up for failure by expecting ourselves to do all the things in a very short amount of time? And we stress ourselves out the entire day trying to get it done only to approach the end of the day and beat ourselves up over everything that we didn't get done. So I start my morning off with an expectation that I probably won't get everything done on my to-do list because my to-do lists are usually almost always extremely ambitious, but I can trust God with what doesn't happen that day, that that was in his will and that it will get done when he's ready for it to get done. And that gives me a peace to go throughout the day without this pressure that I have to get everything done. I can trust God with what doesn't get done. And it also gives me peace at nighttime where I'm not like going over in my head everything that I didn't get done and I'm stressing myself out about it. So pray for peace that you will accept what did happen that day, but you'll also accept what didn't happen that day as well. Then finally, for my morning prayer, I like to just cast all my care and anxiety on God. And I just tell him specifically what's on my mind and my heart. I like to actually journal this part out to God and just leave it there, leave it at his throne. So I don't start my day off with this illusion that everything is perfect in my life and everything will be perfect. I'm not saying that that is how this works because prayer is about connecting with God to receive his power, his strength, his direction. We live in a fallen world, so that doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect. And when it's not, I have the opportunity to cast my cares on God and to share with him what's going on in my mind, in my heart before the day starts so that I can leave it with him and I can move on with my day and not be stuck in that anxiety, not be stuck in the fear and the worry, um, but knowing that God's working on it while I work on what I do have control over. And so I do think it's very helpful in the morning to set aside time to pour your heart out to God and leave the worry and anxiety in his hands. So I hope that these prayer tips for a morning prayer that lead to a worry-free day help you to really have some amazing days and some even more amazing time with the Lord. Did you know that God made us all beautifully different even in the way that we pray? That's right. 
Your prayer personality is the unique way that you are most likely to communicate with God and knowing which of the three prayer personality types you have can equip you to hear from God more clearly and overcome any obstacles to your communication with Him. I invite you to take my prayer personality quiz to learn how you best hear from God, how you most likely connect with Him in prayer, and just to have a little fun. Take the quiz now at prayquiz.com or find the link in the show notes for today's show. It is my hope that today's episode provided you with insight and helpful tips on how you can pray. We have so much more to talk about when it comes to prayer, so I hope that if you were encouraged by today's show, You'll share it with a friend and subscribe so that you won't miss any future episodes of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we will continue to learn how just like breathing, prayer can become a natural, consistent, and life-giving part of your everyday life. Until then, be sure to connect with me at BelovedWomen.org or join me on the Beloved Women app for unlimited videos to learn God's word, encourage your soul, and grow your faith. Available now in the Apple and Google Play stores or at BelovedWomen.tv. Thank you so much for listening today. And until next time, God bless. Teach Us to Pray is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hi, I'm Beckett Cook, host of The Beckett Cook Show. I lived as a gay man in Hollywood for many, many years until I had a radical encounter with Jesus 13 years ago. Since then, I've gotten my master's degree in seminary and published a book called A Change of Affection. On my podcast, The Becca Cook Show, I sit down with fascinating Christian scholars and thinkers to address the lies of the culture and bring the biblical truth to bear on those lies. To start listening now, go to lifeaudio.com or search for The Becca Cook Show on your favorite podcasting platform.